If you are a software engineer or you want to become one, there are a vast number of tools involved in your day-to-day, -day, from the beginning to the end of the development cycle. In this video, we'll talk about 10 types of foundational tools that we use across the complete development cycle. We will discuss why they are important and also we'll cover some tools that will improve your workflow. The first and most important one is your IDE or your text editor. Here we will find tools like your JetBrains IDE, I'm using Rider in my day-to-day, -day. or maybe you'll be using something like Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio. There's a lot of tools in this space. The important thing is to find one that fits the ecosystem. So if you will start writing c .net, maybe Visual Studio or JetBrains Rider will be excellent tools for that. But if you are writing JavaScript or React, VS Code will be the excellent tool for that. And when the community adopts one given tool, usually you will find more extensions and a better user experience as a developer. The second type of tool is version control. Nowadays, you don't have that proliferation of tools of the days of Mercurial or SourceSafe and things like that. So what you want to learn is Git, so you can start versioning your code professionally, but then there will be tools for collaboration on top of it. And there you will find things like GitHub, Bitbucket or GitLab, for example. And the interesting thing about these tools is that they not only give you a way to collaborate around code, they also do nowadays issue and project management. While in a corporate setting, likely you will still find things like Jira. In many cases, using the issue management from GitHub will be more than perfect for what you need to do. So my suggestion is that you learn Git and then you move to learn GitHub. Why? Because even if your company doesn't use GitHub, the learnings that you'll take from there, you can move them and apply them to other platform. And being comfortable with GitHub is extremely important nowadays when we rely so much in the open source world. So we will still keep in touch with GitHub a lot. The third family of tools is CI-CD, Continuous Integration and Continuous Delivery. Many of those collaboration tools that we talked before already give you those features to you. What are we talking about? We are talking about things like having pipelines, building your code, running workflows based on your interactions with your source control. So here you will find tools like GitHub Actions or Jenkins or Team City. So the important thing is that you learn how those pipelines work, why they are important, how to set up a pipeline for a project, how does that integrate with the issue management, the project life cycle. And if you need to pick one to start, just go with GitHub Actions. Why? For the same reason that we discussed before. GitHub is the overall solution for open source, so it's a good way to start learning. And those pipelines will take you to the fourth family of tools. We are talking about code analysis. We all know the importance of code quality. We talk about code smells. We know all those rules about clean code, all those things, or the importance of test coverage, all those things that you have learned about. But the thing is, how can you have a policy? How can you enforce that that in fact happens? So understanding those tools and knowing how to use them in your day-to-day is extremely important because it's a policy that you have in place that will replace many hours of code reviewing, but also that you can use them as a way of learning. And what types of tools are we talking about? We are talking about things like SonarCube or as an example, Codacy. Once you have those tools in place, you will see that they will take you to the next obvious thing that is testing. So the fifth family is testing frameworks. Having tests in place is essential to the success of your continuous delivery strategy or continuous integration. So you need to familiarize yourself with the testing framework for the language that you use. Here I will not say that you should pick one and stick to it because that framework will be heavily dependent on the language that you are working with. And if you are a full stack developer, likely you need to be familiar with multiple of them. Unit tests should be written in the language of your code, language that you write the code. So if you are writing Java on the back end, you might need one thing, and you are writing JavaScript on the front end, you need another thing. So here find the most popular one in your community. It might be XUnit in .NET, it might be JUnit, it might be Chest, whatever. But find the ones that relate to the language that you are writing code and learn them. The next family of tools that you should be familiar with is built around 
tools that are quite recent in our industry. We are talking about containers. So we are talking about tools like Docker and Kubernetes. Nowadays, containers are extremely important, not only as a way to deploy your solutions, but also they can be extremely important to enable you to have a good testing strategy in place. With technologies like test containers, you can nowadays have a better test suite than in the past. So nowadays, understanding containerization is fundamental in our job. In the next one, let's talk about monitoring. And here we are talking about things like metrics, alerts, logs, traces. All those things are extremely important to keep your application healthy in the day to day. There are many things that you can do during the development cycle of an application to ensure that they will work. However, the information that you absorb once it's deployed is something that is invaluable. And quite often I see developers completely ignoring the data that can come out of their applications being used. So having an understanding on how to put metrics and traces in place is extremely important. And nowadays our job is simplified. Why? In the past, you would need to, to find a given vendor and lock yourself to the product offered by that vendor. But nowadays, we have the Open Telemetry initiative that simplifies all of that. And since Open Telemetry became mainstream, the thing that you should do now is to start learning Open Telemetry. By the end, Open Telemetry will serve other types of tools. But here, the market is so huge that I don't have one that I would say that you should learn that one. It will be heavily dependent on things like uh, the agreements that you have in your company or, for example, the cloud provider that you are using. So start by learning open telemetry. Start by understanding what is a metric, what is a trace, how to put them in place. And now let's talk about three more families of development tools that will improve your workflow. And let's start by the obvious one, that is AI. We still can't be sure of the impact of AI in our field. We don't know how this profession will be in the future. However, we know one thing. We know that we should start learning it. We should start using it as a tool to improve our development workflow. So here I recommend you to start to be comfortable with code assistants. Things like GitHub Copilot or Amazon Code Whisper. They will not replace you, but they will be a good tool to help you to achieve your goals. If you don't have access to one of those tools, at least start with something like ChatGPT. The next one is terminals. Being comfortable using a terminal is one of the best things that you can do for your productivity. Not only because you might learn a lot of tricks with your terminal that will speed up your development, but also because nowadays, many of the instructions that you find online when you are following, for example, a tutorial, are based on CLIs that you should run on your terminal. Why? Because those are consistent, those survive to change. And when we are talking about point and click, those things change so often that then guides and documentation don't survive to that. And the other obvious advantage is that it's quite easy to automate using a CLI. So find a good terminal for your operating system. For example, if you are in Windows, the Windows terminal is amazing. If you are using macOS, I suggest you to use iTerm. There's other fancy ones nowadays that you can find online, but those two are quite good. And the last family of tools that I have to you is one that often developers ignore. We are talking about note-taking. And this might mean using things like Notion or using things like Obsidian, or if your company uses something like Confluence, it's using it. But creating the habit of writing down things, of taking notes, of organizing your thoughts by writing is extremely important. It's an excellent way of thinking by writing down things. But even more important than being familiar with those tools is to be comfortable to use something like this. A simple notebook and a pen. Pen and paper are so powerful and we usually forgot about them. The simple habit of doing some drawings or capturing everything that comes to your mind before starting to code will be life-changing. But none of those tools alone will have as much impact on you as software testing. So take a look into this video if you want to find a complete roadmap on how to start learning software testing.